In this video, we're going to cover the considerations you need to make when purchasing people. Think about the time frame for your railroad and how real do you want your items to be. We'll talk about the different materials they're made of. We'll talk about making a scene and the poses that your people come in. We'll do a brief discussion of modifying and we'll talk about whether or not you should paint. So stick around to the end. Considerations for selecting people for your railroad. There are several things that should be considered as you think about selecting people to live and work on your railroad. These considerations are setting of your railroad, the time frame you are trying to replicate, the scenes you want to create, and the effects you want to achieve. In addition, you will want to determine if you want your people to be ready to go or in need of finishing. The settings of the railroad will determine the style of person needed. If the railroad is a narrow gauge western railroad, it will probably need a few small town inhabitants, some miners, cowhands, and other rural folk. The train crews and maintenance workers will be dressed in regular work clothes of the day. Conductors are probably the only people who have distinctive clothing. Passengers on these trains usually wore their everyday clothing with a few exceptions such as gamblers and salesmen. Most people were dusty, disheveled, and dressed plainly. If the railroad is a standard gauge line, it will require some city dwellers, small town people, and some rural people as well. Standard gauge roads usually were crewed with people who wore distinctive clothing for many of the jobs they did. The people who worked on these lines were usually well dressed and reflected the styles of the day. Railroad employees are some of the best paid people around, so business people, professionals, and ordinary people use these railroads for almost all travel outside their hometowns. These people dressed up to ride the trains. Time frame. For those who model in a specific time frame, the clothing worn by the people on and around the railroad should reflect the styles of the day. There are several books and websites available to help visualize what the styles look like for a particular era. There are hundreds of websites that can be found by simply typing in 1920 clothing styles or 1950 clothing styles or whatever time frame you're representing on your railroad. These sites show you the kind of clothing and accessories worn for a time period. They also show you the hairstyles, makeup, and shoes worn by women and men and children for that era. These can help in the selection of proper figures or can help in modifying a figure for an era. Realism a consideration for selecting figures is realism. There are many figures available to the large scaler that are created to realistically resemble the actual people who live and work on a railroad and who live in the towns or countryside that you model. If realism is important, then those figures that appear as real people should be chosen. The true test of a realistic figure is the molding and painting of the face and hair, eyes, facial hair, and lips. They're often difficult to create and paint. There are a few figures on the market that work out and actually look very realistic. There are many types of figures available that are only caricatures of real people or might be a little too small or too big. At Christmas time, there are a lot of characters out there that are represented for the Christmas villages. Some of those look very, very good, but they're smaller, whereas some of them are too large, but you just got to look for the ones that are just right. Material. The material from which the figures are constructed is also an important consideration. The figures available for large-scale trains are made from cast resin plastic, metal, and ceramic. If the figures are used as they come for the manufacturer, any of these materials are acceptable. If they're to be painted or modified, the material can make a difference in the outcome. As long as the figure is first cleaned and painted with a primer base, any of the materials will accept a final coat of acrylic. One thing to keep in mind, if you buy some of the Christmas village type people, uh, they can be outside, but we don't leave them outside all the time. To be honest with you, most of the railroaders that I talk to only put out people when they're having an open house or a party. Most of the time they just stay uh, inside in their little Tupperware containers. What is the scene that you are modeling? The scenes featured on the railroad also determine the kind of figure selected. 
Scenes are important because they draw the attention of visitors to certain areas of the large-scale railroad. In creating scenes, people play a major role. One scene that can be created might be an engineer, fireman, conductor, or brakeman gathered beside a locomotive waiting to leave the station. These figures might also be found on the locomotive, caboose, and other cars of the train in motion. The track lane crew might include several workmen gathered around a work site or a siding. In a town, a variety of people could be assembled at the station waiting for a passenger train, sitting at an outside cafe, or looking for fruits and vegetables at a roadside stand. A newsboy could be selling papers along the street where pedestrians are walking and a butcher might stand outside his shop. A number of children might be playing in a schoolyard or the front of backyards of a house. Snapping the picture of the town mayor or a nurse might be waiting to catch a train, or several bums might be gathered around a fire near an abandoned siding. Passengers may be seated inside your coaches, diner, or observation cards, or even in an interurban. Any of these scenes will capture the imagination of anyone looking at the railroad. One of the scenes that we've seen on many railroads is a church with a wedding party, and it makes it look real. Poses. Since all of the figures available are static, it's important to consider ways to either take advantage of these still poses or try and make the figures appear to be in motion. Because the figures don't actually move, it's important to select them mostly for being in positions of rest. In the selection of figures, consider the pose that the figure is in and where it will be placed to provide the best realism. Figures who are posed in leaning, sitting, and lying positions should be used most. It's easy to pose these figures realistically by simply putting them in scenes where they are at rest. An auto mechanic leaning under the hood of a car or truck or lying under that car or truck will look very realistic. Passengers sitting on benches at the station or in passenger cars will also look real. A woman bent over a wash tub in a yard will look very authentic, as will a car hop backing out of the door of a hamburger joint. A worker in a roundhouse offering a lathe would also look real. A conductor or brakeman leaning on the rail, standing on the back of the caboose, or climbing up the rungs of a ladder on a freight car will be lifelike. In planning to buy figures, considerable thought should be given to the scenes to be created on the railroad. Buying figures without understanding where they will be used will make it difficult to make them appear real on your railroad. Planning the scenes first, then buying the figures to fit into those scenes will enhance the realism. Modifying figures. We'll be covering in detail later on in this series how you modify figures, but it should be one of the things that you think about when you go to purchase a figure. Modifying the figure is easiest when they're made from plastic. Metal figures can also be modified, but it's harder with metal than with plastic. Ceramic figures are very difficult to modify. Figures with bases to be removed are much the same, but those with ceramic bases are very difficult to remove without destroying the figure in the process. The bases of plastic or metal figures are much easier to remove. Painted or not painted. Finally, it's important to decide if the figures will be purchased already painted or unfinished. There are many painted figures available. Some of these are very realistic and others appear toy-like. The painted figures many times require repainting if you want to make them look 100% believable. Even the ones that appear to have the correct colors are usually finished in a gloss paint and it will require dulling. Many of the unfinished figures can be purchased with a primer coat for ease of painting for your railroad. Priming, painting, weathering, and creating figures will be covered in detail later in this video series. But understand what is available and what can be done with the figures purchased or created will help in the choice of figures.